back to my physics class. In today's lesson, we're going to be discussing the proper steps and how to solve physics problems. Before we get started, let me ask you a question. How would you go about solving a murder mystery? Would you pick a suspect and then do everything possible to make the evidence fit that suspect? Or would you carefully analyze every detail and clue, collect all the evidence, and then narrow down your suspect? So what does the previous scenario have anything to do with physics? Well, every year, students who struggle in physics struggle because they jump to the latest equation that they've learned and try to solve from there. Let's make sure that you don't make the same mistake by teaching you the proper systematic approach to solving problems. Step one, read the problem and identify the question. In this case, the question is asking about the amount of time it takes the bird to fly over that distance. Step two, draw a picture. I don't mean the exact scenario of a bird flying or a car traveling down a certain road. I mean just the physics of what is going on. Luckily for you, every object and person will be represented by a box. We will learn more about these boxes when we get to free body diagrams or force body diagrams. So as you can see, the bird is represented by the box, the velocity is the blue vector, and the distance is the purple line. Step three, identify your unknowns or the variable that you are solving for with the correct units. In this case, we're solving for time and the question asks us for it to be in hours. Step four, identify your knowns and include the units. Pay attention to keywords that hint at value of zero or constant values. Our velocity is 30 kilometers per hour and our distance is 22,000 meters. Step five, check the units. Do all your variables have the correct units? If so, move to the next step. If not, convert to the right units first. As we look at this problem, we notice that the velocity is in kilometers per hour, but our distance is in meters, and kilometers and meters do not match. 99% of the time, you should convert to meters, but since the question asks for time in hours, it's okay to convert from meters to kilometers. I've shown both methods here as a refresher. If you're going from kilometers to the base unit of meters, you move the decimal three places to the right. And if you're converting from the base unit of meters to kilometers, you move the decimal three places to the left. Step six, pick the correct equation. We are essentially providing you with a formula sheet that has all the different equations you will learn in less than nine months but these formulas were found and derived over centuries. So please take a few moments carefully looking over all of them before selecting one. If you just pick the last equation that you've learned, it is no different than picking the suspect first and then trying to make everything work. So how do you pick the right equation? You look at your variables that you wrote down, in this case, time, velocity, and distance, and focus on finding an equation that only has those three variables. If you're missing one of those variables in an equation, you definitely can't use it. Likewise, if you have extra variables in an equation, you also can't use it. So the only equation that we can use is equation number one, which is V equals D over T, or velocity is equal to distance over time. Step seven, rearrange the equation to isolate or separate your unknown variable. We are solving for T, and the shortcut to solving for a variable in the bottom is to simply flip-flop with the variable that is currently isolated. So T and V swap places. Step eight, now we can go ahead and substitute our numerical values and solve. As you can see, either number used from the conversions give us the same answer. Step nine, finally check to see if your answer makes sense. The bird flies at 30 kilometers every one hour and 22 kilometers is less than 30 kilometers. Therefore, our answer should be less than one hour, which it is at 0.73. So yes, the answer does make sense and we are good, assuming no mathematical mistakes were made or you didn't punch the wrong number into the calculator, which is a common mistake. Now the last problem was an easy example. Let's try a different one and see how important it is to follow the systematic approach. In this problem, the quarterback can throw a football so that it will leave his hand at 90 miles per hour. If while still in his hand, the quarterback can increase the velocity of the ball from rest at a rate of 45 meters per second squared, 
How long does it take him to release the ball? If the scenario is confusing, don't worry about the picture. Focus on the clues instead. We are solving for time in seconds. In the previous problem, we were told specifically to find time in hours. If the problem doesn't specify like the one here, time should always be in seconds. When you look at the problem, there are only two numerical values of 90 miles per hour and 45 meters per second squared. But there are several key words that you have to pay attention to as they provide other values and clues as of which value belongs to which variable. The words rest and stop refer to a velocity value of zero meters per second. The word from indicates our initial velocity and the word to, along with the phrase of leave his hand, refer to the final velocity. Also notice that the word acceleration was never mentioned in the problem, but the acceleration value is 45 meters per second squared. Your hint is from the unit of meters per second squared. If you are ever in doubt as of what variable a numerical value represents, write it down with the units and then look for the unit in the parentheses in the formula chart. As we see in equation number two, it says it is the acceleration equation with meters per second squared in the parentheses next to it. So let's look at the known values. From rest will represent our VI or initial velocity with a value of zero meters per second. The clues of leaving his hand and the quarterback to release the ball is our final velocity or VF at a value of 90 miles per hour. As we mentioned earlier, 45 meters per second squared is our acceleration or variable A. Moving to our next step, we see that miles per hour and meters per second do not match. Until both of these are the same units, you can't plug them into this equation, unless of course you want to be wrong. So we're going to convert miles per hour into meters per second. Every mile is 1,609.34 meters. So we multiply 90 miles by that amount to get the value in meters. We also have to convert one hour into seconds, which is equal to 3,600 seconds. Don't forget to divide the meters by the seconds in order to convert 90 miles per hour into 40.23 meters per second. Now comes the crucial step of choosing the right equation from the six equations that you see. We need to select an equation that has T, VF, VI, and A in it. Nothing more, nothing less. So let's look at equation six. Equation six is missing T, and it also has an extra variable of D. Either one of those is grounds for dismissal. So now we know that any equation with D or lacking T is out. This eliminates equations one, four, five, and six. As a result, we can only use equation two or three. They are both the same equation, just arranged for different variables. It doesn't matter if you use equation two or three, as long as you isolate for T correctly. Here I've shown the proper steps for either equation and the end result is T is equal to VF minus VI over A, where basically time is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by acceleration. Once you have isolated T, you can substitute your values and solve for time. Remember that if you hadn't converted the 90 miles per hour final velocity, your answer would look drastically different. Finally, let's check to see if your answer makes sense. If you've ever seen anyone throw anything, the object is not in their hand for a long time when you think about their release time. So yes, 0.89 seconds, which is less than one second, makes sense for this answer. I hope that this lesson has been helpful. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.